I'm Michelle Mikes, the K-12 Mathematics Supervisor for the Cobb County School District. Our district is committed to helping students succeed, and you as parents are an integral part of this process. To help keep you informed about what your child is learning in our math classrooms, we are excited to provide you with these informational videos on concepts taught throughout the school year. Thank you for taking the time to discover ways to support your students' learning. Welcome to the fifth grade Multiplying and Dividing with Decimals parent video. My name is Miranda Westbrook, K-5 Professional Learning Specialist for the Cobb County School District. In Unit 3, students explain patterns in the number of zeros of the product when multiplying a number by powers of 10 and explain patterns in the placement of the decimal point. Students also add, subtract, multiply, and divide decimals to the hundredth place using concrete models or drawings and strategies based on place value and the properties of operations. Students relate their strategy to a written method and explain their reasoning. At the fifth grade level, concepts are emphasized from a hands-on approach in order to develop understanding rather than relying on memorization of rules and procedures. By the conclusion of Unit 3, students should be able to Understand that the placement of the decimal point is determined by multiplying or dividing a number by 10 or a multiple of 10. Demonstrate a conceptual understanding of operations with decimals as opposed to relying on procedural knowledge, such as multiplying tenths by tenths will result in hundredths, or dividing by one tenth or one hundredth will result in a quotient that is 10 times or 100 times greater than the dividend. For example, 5 divided by 1 tenth equals 50, and 5 divided by 1 hundredth equals 500. And use estimation to determine the reasonableness of answers. In the first segment of the video, let's investigate the powers of 10 and the placement of the decimal point. To model problems with decimals concretely, we will use base 10 blocks. The unit cube will represent the hundredths, the rod will represent the tenths, the flat will represent the ones, and the large cube will represent tens. Let's model the following problem with base 10 blocks, 14 hundredths times 10. We can represent the number 14 hundredths using one rod and four unit cubes, where the rod represents one tenth and the four unit cubes represent four hundredths. To multiply the number 14 hundredths by 10, we need to multiply each digit by 10. So 1 tenth times 10 and 4 hundredths times 10. We can see that 10 tenths is equivalent to 1 whole and 4 hundredths times 10 is equal to 4 tenths. Therefore, 14 hundredths times 10 is equal to 1 and 4 tenths. If we continue to multiply 14 hundredths by a multiple of 10, we can see that the product in each subsequent problem is 10 times greater. By analyzing multiple examples, students are able to see a pattern between the placement of the decimal and the number of zeros in the product. By looking at the pattern, we can see that the digits shift one place value position to the left each time as the product increases. Students might justify their reasoning by explaining, I noticed that every time I multiplied by 10, each digit's value became 10 times greater. To make a digit 10 times greater, I have to shift it one place value to the left. Students also need ample experiences with dividing by powers of 10. Let's consider the problem 1,234 divided by 10, which gives a quotient of 123 and 4 tenths. If we continue to divide 1,234 by a multiple of 10, we can see that the quotient in each subsequent problem is 10 times less. By analyzing multiple examples, students are able to see that the digits in each quotient shifts one place value position to the right each time. Students extend their work with multiples of 10 by using whole number exponents to denote powers of 10. For example, students learn that 10 squared is the same as 10 times 10, which is equivalent to 100. In a different example, 10 cubed is the same as 10 times 10 times 10, which equals 1000. Students then apply their knowledge of exponents to solve problems. Let's consider this problem. 
2 and 5 tenths times 10 cubed. Students should understand that 2 and 5 tenths times 10 cubed is equal to 2 and 5 tenths times 10 times 10 times 10, which is the same as 2 and 5 tenths times 1,000. Using the knowledge from our previous investigation with multiplying by multiples of 10, students can reason that each digit in 2 and 5 tenths will shift three place value places to the left to give a product of 2,500. Students should reason that the exponent indicates how many places the digits are shifting when they multiply by a power of 10. Not just that the digits are moving, but that they are multiplying or making the number 10 times greater three times. Let's look at a different example. 2,365 divided by 10 squared. In this problem, students should understand that 2,365 divided by 10 squared is the same as 2,365 divided by 10 times 10, which is equal to 2,365 divided by 100. Students use their knowledge of powers of 10 to reason that each digit in 2,365 will shift two place value places to the right to give a quotient of 23 and 65 hundredths. After exploring powers of 10, students should be able to make generalizations when multiplying and dividing numbers by multiples of 10. For example, 468 times 10 to the 4th equals 4,680,000 because 10 to the 4th is equal to 10,000, meaning that the place value of the digits in 468 is increased or shifted by four place value positions to the left. In another example, 78 and 5 tenths divided by 10 to the 1st equals 7 and 85 hundredths because 10 to the 1st is equal to 10 meaning that the place value of the digits in 78 and 5 tenths is decreased or shifted by one place value position to the right. In the next part of the unit, students add, subtract, multiply, and divide decimals to the hundredths place using concrete models and drawings and strategies based on place value and the properties of operations. This standard includes students' reasoning and explanations of how they use models, pictures, and strategies to find the answers to problems. Before students are asked to give exact answers, they should estimate their answers based on their understanding of operations and the value of numbers. At the fifth grade level, all operations with decimals are emphasized from a hands-on approach in order to develop understanding rather than relying on memorization of rules and procedures. At the sixth grade level, students focus on fluently adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing multi-digit decimals using the standard algorithm for each operation. While students will continue to work with all four operations with decimals in this unit, the primary focus is on multiplication and division, since students learned about decimal addition and subtraction in Unit 2. For more information about decimal addition and subtraction, please review the Grade 5 Unit 2 video. Let's start this segment by investigating the meaning of decimal multiplication. The first multiplication problem we will look at is 4 times 15 hundredths. Using the meaning of multiplication, this problem can be thought of as four groups of 15 hundredths. Each paper plate represents one group. I need to place 15 hundredths in each group. I can use repeated addition to find the total number of blocks. 15 hundredths plus 15 hundredths plus 15 hundredths plus 15 hundredths equals 60 hundredths, which equals 6 tenths. Let's look at a different example. 2 and 5 tenths times 1 and 8 tenths. We can model this problem using an area model. To help us build an area model, let's first rewrite the problem using the distributive property. 2 plus 5 tenths times 1 plus 8 tenths. We can model this with base 10 blocks. 2 plus 5 tenths times 1 plus 8 tenths. Now we need to multiply each of the digits. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 8 tenths is 16 tenths, or 1 and 6 tenths. 5 tenths times 1 equals 5 tenths. And 5 tenths times 8 tenths equals 40 hundredths, or 4 tenths. 
Notice that the design creates a perfect rectangle. Students may also see a representation of an area model similar to this example. Another strategy that students may use is the partial products method. Note that the partial products are evident in the area model. 8 tenths times 5 tenths equals 40 hundredths. 8 tenths times 2 equals 16 tenths or 1 and 6 tenths. 1 times 5 tenths equals 5 tenths and 1 times 2 equals 2. Regardless of the strategies that students choose, the product of 2 and 5 tenths times 1 and 8 tenths equals 4 and 50 hundredths, which equals 4 and 5 tenths. Let's look at an example of how to model a decimal by decimal computation problem. 6 tenths times 8 tenths. In this problem, we are multiplying to find 6 tenths of 8 tenths. We can show this problem by using grids. In the first model, I am showing 6 tenths of a whole, and in the second model, I am showing 8 tenths of a whole. We know that the product of 6 tenths and 8 tenths will result in hundredths. If I combine the two grids, the product will be the overlap of the two. In the representation, we see that 48 hundredths are shaded dark blue, indicating that 6 tenths of 8 tenths equals 48 hundredths. So 6 tenths times 8 tenths has a product of 48 hundredths. Students can also represent multiplication problems on a number line. For example, Jane walks 1 and 2 tenths miles each day. If Jane walks 3 days this week, how many total miles will she walk? I can represent this problem with the equation 3 times 1 and 2 tenths or 3 groups of 1 and 2 tenths. I can show 3 groups of 1 and 2 tenths on the number line. Three groups of one and two tenths on the number line gives a product of three and six tenths. So Jane will walk three and six tenths miles this week. Now let's look at an example of a division problem. Students have previously learned there are two types of division problems. Partitive division problems, where students determine the number of objects in each group, and measurement division problems, in which students determine the number of groups after dispersing objects into groups of a given size. Let's start by looking at an example of partitive division. 3 and 6 tenths divided by 3. My base 10 blocks are representing my dividend of 3 and 6 tenths. Since I have a divisor of 3, I need 3 groups. I can represent my 3 groups with paper plates. I'm going to disperse my dividend of 3 and 6 tenths equally among each of my groups. If I count the number of blocks in each group, I can see that I have 1 and 2 tenths blocks. Therefore, 3 and 6 tenths divided by 3 has a quotient of 1 and 2 tenths. Students can also use their knowledge of partial quotients to solve the problem. An example of this method is shown on the screen. Now let's look at an example of measurement division, where students determine the number of groups. In this problem, 2 and 4 tenths divided by 1 and 2 tenths I need to determine the number of groups to find the quotient. My dividend indicates that I have 2 and 4 tenths total blocks or objects to disperse, and my divisor indicates there are 1 and 2 tenths in each group. After placing 1 and 2 tenths in each group, I can see that there are two groups. Therefore, the quotient of 2 and 4 tenths divided by 1 and 2 tenths is 2. An example of partial quotients with this problem is also included on the screen. Students can also represent division problems on a number line. For example, a pitcher contains 3 and 2 tenths liters of water. Leah pours the water from the pitcher into cups that each hold 8 tenths of a liter of water. How many cups can Leah fill with water? I need to find 3 and 2 tenths divided by 8 tenths to find the number of cups that Leah can fill. On the number line, I continue to show 8 tenths in each group until I get to zero. In other words, the picture is empty. If I count the total number of groups or cups on the number line, I see that 4 cups can be filled with 8 tenths liter of water. In this unit, students analyze patterns to determine the placement of the decimal point and the number of zeros in the product. Additionally, students use whole number exponents to denote powers of 10. 
In the final part of the unit, students perform decimal computation with the four operations using concrete models of representations and explain their reasoning. Thank you for your time. We know that when families and schools work together, student success increases. Please visit the Cobb County Math Department website for additional information and resources to support your student at home.